Jason Castro and Bo Porter are arguing this cannot be the case. Something's going on here. And we've got coaches going at it. Wendelstadt has ejected Porter. Porter obviously had some comments to make for Wendelstadt. Bo does know, and Bo Porter making his, uh, I believe this is the first time we've had you on the show. No, second time. Second time. I was, I was oh, here. I was out. Down. You were out. That's we're right. Yes. That's right. Well, we're glad to have you back. Uh, the segment here is Bo Knows, and we're going to run through some of the topics that current managers are facing. And let's start with Bob Melvin. He's got his hand full right now. His team's in the thick of a big playoff chase. They just lost Fernando Tatis Jr. And then throw in what happened yesterday in Miami. With Jerks and Profar, this is what we need. Joe Musgrove is on the play, is on the mound. Miguel Rojas hits the ball in the gap. Profar fields and seemingly, in fact, does challenge him. Hey, take third. He does take third and later scored, Bo. Yes, it's unacceptable. When you, when you think about the Padres and them fighting for their playoff lives, you just cannot have irresponsible plays like this. They end up losing the game. What did you make of this? Manny Machado and Joe Musgrove going to him. This lets me know they have a chance because when plays like this don't make it to the coaches or the managers, it lets you know that you have the right players on your team. You saw they met him at the top step. They're grabbing him. They're talking to him and letting him know that's not winning baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm gonna there's off. no this, doubt. This bugged me last night when I was watching this. But it also shows to me that Manny Machado is without a doubt the oh, leader in leader. that clubhouse. He is their leader. But it's easy to sit on this couch and say, oh, I played a tough guy and say I would do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I get it. Bob Melvin's one of the best managers in the game. But Profar has to go to the bench. He has to. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Will Myers, you're in that game for me. There has to be a lot's gone down. We were just talking about a lot's gone down. Whether you want to, we dealt with Fernando Tatis not being here. It's a distraction. It's a gut punch. There has to be a come to Jesus with this many superstars and characters on one team. There has to be a meeting where everyone airs. This is what I don't like about you. This is what I like about you. This is what I don't like about you. This is how we're going to win. Period. The end. Whether it's Manny Machado, everybody opens up because there's too much there yeah. for me to take in. There's Clevenger burying Tatis. There's Machado and Soto trying to uh, – Profar, <laughs> you're not good enough to do that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as a manager, when you start making exceptions for your for your players, yeah. you're going to look around one day and you're going to have a team full of exceptions. Well, maybe so we – So that's, uh, why, that's why it has to be addressed, and it has to be addressed immediately. Not just for Profar but for everyone in that clubhouse. And it, this actually makes it easier for the manager. Yeah, what are because we to because do? you're addressing something that the players and everyone else saw as evident that is not acceptable for championship baseball. So sending him to the bench or disciplining him becomes obvious to everyone. Well, maybe we will not see Profar in the lineup uh, today. We'll have to wait and see. And oh. Everyone makes mistakes. Yes. I'm not saying we're all per – listen, I watched Ronald Acuna last night on a ball that Mark Hanna lost almost not get to second base. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that time. There, there's moments of, like, letting your guard down. I get it. But right there in a big spot, kind of with everything that's encapsulating the San Diego Padres, that was a horrendous look. And then he beat you. Yeah. You dare him, yes. and he sticks it right in your face. Let's talk about the, uh, the importance of keeping players fresh. Bo knows the importance of that, and so too does Dave Roberts. Yes, when you look at the opportunity to start resting your players and gearing up for the playoffs, it's it's a balancing act that you don't want to put your team in a situation where you're not hitting on all cylinders heading into the postseason, but it also gives you a complete advantage from a standpoint of you can get guys healthy, you can pick your spots, you can look at matchups that are favorable in your in, in your playoff push. It also gives you the opportunity. You know that you're going to get the buy. So you get to get your rotation set up. You get to rest your bullpen guys the way you need to rest them. Guys that – teams that put themselves in this position, this is why winning the marathon is so important throughout the season. d -Row, you've said you've been on different teams where you had plenty of breathing room in the playoffs and then you had to fight just to get in. As a player, did you like the rest or how did that – you think that affected the team? I don't think there's any one way that works better than the other. I think it's the team that gets hot from jump. Yeah. I mean, every out's important once postseason starts and it all, boom. 
We won the division last day of the season with San Francisco. It felt like we were playing playoff baseball for a month, and it just carried through. Right. I've been there where first week of September with the Braves, we're like, none of now these what games do do? matter. <laughs> and then you get, wow, can I turn it back on? So I like having a little tension leading into the postseason. I, but I do understand a 17-game lead. Especially with a veteran Take ball club. Take advantage of With it. a veteran ball club, I think it really helps. Bo also knows the importance of getting in the mind and in the head of the opposing manager. What we mean here, what we're referring to, Terry Francona and Kevin Cash. Two longtime buddies, but they have a great time needling one another. Remember uh, a while back, Kevin Cash brought out, brought out Terry Francona's moped and put it on the field, and guys were just taking batting practice, target practice. Uh, then Terry Francona responds with this to Kevin Cash's windshield. Zepp says hi. I need some more clarification on who Zepp. Oh, yes, Cle uh, the Guardian's pitching coach at the time. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, and then there was this. Terry Francona had this to say about a particular photo that was hanging in the manager's office. Check this out. The picture falls on and you try to fix it. Oh man, I just got tired of looking at him. I just, I, I it was bothers turning my stomach a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, <to you. laughs> Those two go way back. I, I think the coup de grace was so when good. Terry Francona put up on the jumbotron. The career stats. Kevin Cash's uh, career stats. That's... I mean, Terry's one of the best in the business. I had a chance to play golf with him a couple yeah. times, and he just makes you laugh from start to finish. Him and Kevin Cash are such respect there. Kevin kind of cut his teeth learning from Terry. Yes. Were you a big prank stuff. guy, Bo? I was not a big prank guy, but I think when you when you start to look at that mentorship relationship, I think it's kind of what makes it tick. And it's almost like who's going to get the last laugh. Yeah. So we'll see what Tito does next.